one, two, three. Now we have it. All right, so uh, here we are. Remember last uh, time we uh, said that we're going to work with uh, these plates. Plates are characteristic functions of, uh, so plates are characteristic functions of permitohedral cones. Uh, the idea is later to go to blades, which are the affine version, they contain these plates, and those should be the high intertwiners uh, in the pyramids. So we need to study these plates, the, uh, and uh, as you can see here, a plate of this form, look at one, two, three, this is a standard plate. What you're doing is you put the numbers one, two, three at the top, can you see? Uh, maybe I should use, uh, maybe I should use this. Ah, Hai Zheng Wei. So there we are, uh, we put one, two, three at the top. Do you see, uh, uh, we are calling this a canopy. Look at the, the formula. And uh, you lump them uh, in all possible ways. So uh, lumping is called uh, also set composition in, uh, in combinatorics. Um, this means that every set is unordered. Here, one, two, and two, one are the same. But uh, the, the families are ordered. So it's the same as an ordered partition. So you see, we did this with the, uh, with the uh, uh, top. And then we put underneath all the possible layered binary trees, uh, binary trees which have one node on every layer from the top to the bottom, yes? In addition to this, what's not written here is that we need to anti-symmetrize. So for instance, this would be one, two, uh, three, minus three and one, two, with the same coefficient. We need to anti-symmetrize so that they glue when we put together two plates. Remember when you glue things in uh, homology theory or uh, any kind of simplicial manifolds or so, you, uh, you have to have anything of co-dimension one with, uh, on, uh, with two different normals, yes? So that would be here the two orientations. So this would give you two terms, this one would give you four terms, yes? Because every node needs to be anti-symmetrized. Uh, now, uh, the motivation for this is uh, written here. Uh, the first is the average at infinity. The average at infinity means that you take a big sphere with a fixed center and you take the proportion in the limit uh, as the radius goes to infinity. So this is one third, it clearly occupies one third of the space. And uh, out of the line, out of, so the boundary are these two lines. So out of this line, the, uh, the, our plate occupies one half of it, yes? As average at infinity goes. Uh, we need the averages at infinity because uh, the trees give you a boundary. So the, uh, this is a homology map. You get the boundary and the average at infinity. So if you know these two, you know the derivative, the derivative is a boundary, and you know some average. Yes, this is, this is, uh, this determines a function. Uh, uh, what we'll uh, study next is the inverse map, and then we'll do the uh, relations between these, uh, these uh, trees, and then go to, uh, between these plates, and then go to the affine ones which are blades. Um, the relations appear to be new. The, uh, uh, these regions inside the simplex have been studied, I mean, have been counted, not, not particularly studied, uh, but counted. So here is now the inverse map. So the, these trees were just counting boundaries. Uh, and one could actually uh, prove directly that uh, that uh, the map from 
uh, I mean, characterize the trees and then the map from, uh, uh, from uh, linear combinations of plates to, uh, to uh, trees uh, is reversible. But instead, and very surprisingly, it turns out, it turned out that, the, uh, that every tree gives rise to a, an actual function on, uh, on the, in our ambient space. And this is a function. So uh, the tree becomes a very concrete object. At the beginning, it was just labeling something. And here we are. Uh, let me uh, give you a bit of background here. These, uh, so what, uh, what we are doing here, let me uh, move it uh, a little bit. Yes, what we are doing here is the following. We have the root solid. Uh, this, this is a root solid, you can see. Yes, so the 12 vertices of this are roots. Uh, they are here, the, the 12 uh, roots of SL4. SL4 has 12 of diagonal elements, E1, 2, up to E3, 4, yes, E4, 3. So, so, uh, so these are these 12 roots, the, the corresponding HIJs. Uh, they have four coordinates, but the sum of the coordinates is always zero. Uh, now, uh, we work with the special hyperplanes. The special hyperplanes are uh, uh, given by subsets, like here, x1, 2 means x1 plus x2. X1, 2, 3 is X1 plus X2 plus X3. Yes, so the ambient space is that the sum of all the Xs is zero, as you can see here. Yes, now you can see here actual coordinates in black. And uh, this is, uh, so uh, we're working here in a cone around the origin. We could work, actually what we're doing is the affine theory of plates plates which are localized at various points, in which case we have a coordinate after each of these one, two, three, four, after each lump. Yes, we have a coordinate. And the coordinate is a coordinate of the vertex. For instance, if we had here three, it means that instead of x1 bigger than zero, we take x1 bigger than three, yes? And, uh, but here everything is around zero. Uh, look at this. Uh, uh, this uh, root solid here, so this is a cone around zero, and uh, uh, you have all these hyperplanes. X3, here x3 plus x4 is bigger than zero on this side. Here x1 plus x2, the complement, is bigger than zero. Yes? So the uh, resulting uh, things are called shards. I call them shards, yes. The number of shards uh, grows uh, super exponentially. It grows like two to the power two to the x, two to the power two to the dimension. Because uh, you have uh, subsets, yes, and uh, uh, a, a shard is an intersection of subsets. Uh, moreover, for each subset, so this, this is uh, around zero. Uh, the affine shards have never been studied. They are new. Uh, but here we have uh, the things around zero. Uh, as you can see here, x3 is bigger than zero, and here it's complement. x1 plus x2 plus x4 is bigger than zero. So if you are in a shard like this one here, the one in front, then every uh, subset of variable, every, the sum of every subset of variable, like let's say x1 plus x2, has a definite sign. Yes, so x1 plus x2 is either positive on the whole thing or negative. And you have to look, look here, for instance, you see x1 plus x2 is positive. Yes, you are on the side. And you can see indeed x1 plus x2, do you see is three, minus one, which is two, yes? So, um, 
so these are the these are the subsets. Uh, any questions uh, about this? Uh, the big question. So again, these are not classified. They contain some problems which are known to be very hard in number theory. Uh, in particular, if you look at the vertices, which are an intersection of such such equations, they are uh, solutions of Hadamar Hadamar matrices, uh, matrices which have only zero or one, or matrices which equivalently matrices which have only plus and minus one square matrices. So, uh, so the problem is known to be extremely difficult. That's why we went to trees, because uh, in in uh, four coordinates, I mean, it's relatively easy, but uh, otherwise, uh, in general, it's harder. The uh, what I have used here is the same projection that uh, I use for the sculpture. You have the radial, so you inflate this on a. Uh, on a ball, yes, I learned that when you do puzzles, uh, then changing the shape of the object without the mechanism is called a mod, a modification. Yes, so you do a mod like this, and then you project the, the, uh, you project, uh, the sphere stereographically. And this is a stereographic projection underneath, yes? Uh, now, you can see here the standard plate in blue. This is this permitohedral cone. And look at it. Uh, do you see on this edge, inside this circle, x1 is positive, yes? And x2 plus 3 plus 4 is, ne un is negative, yes? So here you are in x1 is positive on this line, do you see on this line x1 plus x2 is positive? Yes? And on the top, on the other circle, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is positive. Yes? And that's a standard plate. So it's a flag of equations. Yes? And these have appeared, uh, as I say, can, they can be found in works of uh, Araki, for instance, in the 1960s, in retarded potentials. Uh, the way I found it, I counted these, and, uh, and uh, uh, I counted these, and there's a database of sequences which uh, gave a correspondence to that. Very good, so now we have to map the trees back into functions on the plane. I mean on the, yes, functions on the plane. And here's a rule. You take a tree, uh, let's say here, uh, here it's x1, uh, I mean the, the leaves are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4. And you look at the region. Now the convention here is that this is uh, this which is called red here it appears a bit pink so this red is uh, means plus one this one is also plus one but it's singled out the blue is a negative one and the, uh, the white is zero yes yeah, so this is a function So once again, we mapped uh, uh, a, a region a plate into th a sum of trees. Now we map each tree into a sum of uh, uh, regions uh, with coefficients. This is to be divided by four factorial. That's a number of leaves. And uh, there, are some, uh, uh, there are some other coefficient which will be put uh, a bit later. And uh, yes, okay. And here's a rule now that you take such a tree and you look, uh, you take a region. So we want to find what is the value 
the value will be zero, one, or negative one. It will be multiplicative. And the value is obtained in the following way. We take the bottom node here, and uh, it separates the variables into x1 and x234. Yes? And uh, if the first one is positive and the second negative for that region, the sign is plus. If the first is negative and the second is positive, the sign is minus. And if both have the same sign, the sign of that node is zero. Yes? And then, to get the value of the region, we take the product of the signs of every node. So this appears to be a new kind of combinatorics, symmetric functions, if you work in, uh, in combinatorics, uh, th this, this thing uh, has not been uh, done before. Let's, you can see the region here. Here, x1 is negative. Do you see we are in, look at the region. This is a region that we're looking at. 1, 2, 4, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 3, 4, yes? So you see that uh, 1 here, x1 is positive in this circle, as you can see here, 1, yes? And outside it, x2 plus 3 plus 4 is positive, yes? So x1 would be negative, and x2, 3, 4 is positive. That's a sign inversion that's a negative. Then x2 plus x3, we look here at x2 plus x3. Where's x2 plus x3? This is this horizontal line, do you see? And this uh, particular shard is in the place where x one plus x4 is positive, and x2 plus x3, the complement, is negative. Yes, so x2 plus x3 is negative, this branch here, and x4 is positive. So this gives a sign negative. But finally, x2, look at it, this is x2. We're in the region where x2 is negative. Do you see 2 is 2 at the outside here? And x... Uh, 3 is also negative, x3 is here inside this circle, yes? And uh, so the sign of this node is 0 and the product of the nodes is 0. So this region has a 0, uh, the characteristic function, I mean the function on this region is 0. While on the other one, look at the sign here, x1 is positive, 2, 3, 4 is negative. This is on this little one, yes. Uh, X to three is positive, four is ne uh, negative, positive, uh, negative, uh, positive, that's a minus, and the product of these is plus one. So the sign of this uh, region is positive. So once again, for these shards, what's very difficult, and this is a, a problem which has not been solved in general, I mean, it's. Uh, they're only done by computer uh, in general. So uh, what's very hard is to find when, uh, when an intersection of the main, uh, you know, of the two to the power n minus one regions, as you can see here, x1 plus x2 plus x3 positive and so on, when such an intersection is non-zero. So that part needs to be computed. So, so uh, what kind of inequalities can you have? I mean, obviously, for instance, if x1 is positive and x2 is positive, then x1 plus x2 must be positive. You cannot have it negative. Yes, so, uh, but in general, such things are, are subtle. And uh, I went by computer in the affine case. So in the affine case, these are translated at uh, integers. And uh, so in the affine case, uh, if you go to eight coordinates, there are about uh, 40,000 different kinds of shards up to permutations. So there are, there are uh, really a huge number of things. So any questions? Uh, there's a microphone here. I should take it for questions. Yes, so here's a statement that uh, uh, look at, let's look at the case of three variables with, where we are in the plane. I, the statement is that if you take uh, 
the trees which have uh, three lumps, yes, in the expression, and you apply, so you apply this to the expression of the plate one, two, three into trees. And if you sum those regions, dividing by the factorial of the number of, re of uh, uh, leaves, so here b divided by one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, then uh, remember that each tree has a coefficient. The coefficient was one over the product of the lumping number. So here there's a lump of two and a lump of one. So this is one over one times two times one, one over one, 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 one over one times two. So if you take the functions that I just described and you, uh, you sum them with, the co with these coefficients, yes, divide them by the factorial and so, then you will find exactly our plate, which is uh, a one where x1 is positive and x1 plus x2 is positive. So this is a plate here, you see. The plate in the plane is a double pizza slice. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, the plane in, in, uh, in 3D is the one that I was just describing here. Look at it once again. It's a plate on the roots. X1 positive, X1 plus X2 positive, X1 plus X2 plus X3 positive. Uh, and this is a nice sum of uh, all these trees with all these coefficients. Yes, so if we sum, if we look at any particular region and we sum the coefficients, uh, this divided by n factorial and this uh, product of the number of lumps, the, uh, the sum is exactly zero or one. One if we are inside the plate, yes. At some point I had seen this, then I had forgotten about it, then I had to figure out a proof to go back from trees to plates, and I found I had to find it again. So, any questions about the setup uh, or comments? Uh, as I said, this is, this is a completely, we're entering, uh, yes? The pink one is plus one. Yes, the pink, the pink one, turn it on and wait a bit. Yes, the pink one is, uh, the pink one is plus one, and the, the blue one is negative one. White one is zero. White is zero, exactly. How do you read the value from your tree? Ah, this is exactly what we discussed before. Uh, let's look again at the rule. You take, uh, for uh, you compute it for every region, region by region, yes? You take a region, and then you look at the tree. And for every node, so you'll find a multiplicative function on the tree. For every node, you look at the two branches, left and right. And uh, remember that any subset uh, has a definite value on these shards. That's the whole point of these shards. So if you have any subset like x1 plus x3, it has a definite uh, sign on any of these shards, yes? That's how you define the shards, is the intersection of the x1 plus, of things like x1 plus x3 is positive. Now here, you see for this node, for instance, uh, you take the left side of the node and lump together the right side of the node. Yes, and then you check. If the signs are negative, positive, then it's a minus one. If the signs are positive, negative, it's a plus one. And if, if they have the same sign, it's a zero. And then you take the product of the numbers at every node. And that would be zero, one, or negative one. Yes, and amazingly, if you sum them all, you'll find exactly zero, one. I didn't see the sign, plus, minus, and zero. Uh, where? Here. 
The next slide, yes. Well, this is computed for every region, so those signs depend on every region. So you have here a, a, a couple of shots, I think there are 32 of them. So for each of the 32 shots, you have to make the computation. So let's take, for instance, uh, uh, one of these just uh, for fun. Let's see uh, here, for instance, uh, uh, here you have, you, you see it's x1 is positive and x234 is uh, negative, yes. So here it's a, it's a plus sign, then here x2 plus x3 uh, has a certain sign, x2 plus x3 is positive, look here, you have x2 plus x3 is positive, and x4 is a negative, so this is another plus here. And x2 is uh, positive, let's see, x2 is positive, you see you outside here where x2 is positive. And x3, <coughs> <coughs> x3 is negative, because x3 is positive inside. So, so for this particular region, the signs will be plus, plus, plus. And the product of the signs is, is uh, plus one, yeah. <coughs> As I said, this seems to open a, a whole, uh, uh, I mean, something about symmetric functions. They haven't been used like this before. It seems to open a, a different uh, chapter in combinatorics. Uh, the idea of the proof now, and the proof, is that uh, we're going to uh, take the derivative and proceed by induction. So uh, we're going to take, uh, now in this particular case, uh, we took, uh, for instance, do you see the vertical here? x1 uh, plus x2 is uh, positive on the right and negative on the left, yes, where the complement x3 plus x4 is positive. And uh, we look at the derivative. The derivative is a jump. Uh, and uh, in to fix things, we take the derivative, um, the, the difference between the region which contains one, the number, the coordinate one, and the region which doesn't. Yes, so for instance here, as you can see, this region contains one. You see this is one, three, four. The region to the right of this, uh, the shard. And the shard to the left of this does not contain one. The, the difference here is plus one, minus, minus one. And the difference is uh, the number two. Yes, can you see? And we made this a little bit thicker, so the difference here is plus two. Yes, similarly, all over, these are differences. Here you have also uh, plus two. Uh, here you have a, a negative two. Here you have a zero for the difference for that edge. Here you have a, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, another two and so on. Here you have a one, do you see? A negative one, zero minus, zero minus minus one. Yes? So again, we take the region which near, near that uh, uh, co-dimension one chart, the region which contains one minus the region which doesn't contain one. That's a difference. And we sum these things with the, these differences we sum them first dividing by the number of leaves factorial and then dividing by the number of lumping, the lumping number, which is, for instance, for a tree like this, it's one lump of one, lump of one, lump of two. So it's one over one, one, two, yes? Uh, this uh, lumping number, by the way, was coming from the average at infinity of the tree, of the corresponding tree, when we built it. And the statement now is the following, that uh, if, you, uh, if you take these differences, you add them up, so you get the derivative at, uh, uh, on this uh, 
hyperplane, x1 plus x2 positive and x versus x, uh, x1 plus x2 equal to zero. Yes, yeah, so, so uh, the statement is that this will be the product of uh, one, two, which we have here. Do you see this is the, the uh, look what we have for one, two. If they lump together, it's a one, one. And if they're here for this three, we have a plus one here on one and a negative one on two. Yes? So we should get a product of this times a product. So a product, so look, the, um, uh, this hyperplane separates the coordinates into two subsets. And the statement is the following. If these two subsets are contiguous in, one, in the order 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n, if the two regions are contiguous, like here, 1, 2, versus 3, 4. I'm going to show you another reason later. Then what you get is exactly the product between the, the picture like this on the side one, I mean on one, two, and the same on three, four. So you'll get the product of the two, uh, two uh, things which are computed by induction. If they do have, uh, if, they, if they're not ordered, for instance, if you had one, four, and two, three. Two, three is in the middle of one, four. Remember here we had an ordering because we are looking at the expansion of the plate one, two, three, four, which is in the standard order. So if they are not, then uh, the sum of all these, so the derivative on that line is zero. Once again, if the two are, are ordered, the f you have the first coordinates and then the second coordinate, the set after that, then you get the product of the two. So let's look in this case. If you sum, do you see here you have a coefficient? Let's see, for instance, here you have one over four, one over eight, do you see times this jump here? And uh, uh, here you have a negative uh, uh, one over. Uh, six times two, a negative one over 12, and there's a two, so two over 12. So the coefficients li look extremely uh, complicated, uh, uh, they seem, yes? However, uh, here is the proof for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, this statement. So suppose that the two, that the two, uh, so suppose that we have two regions which are each contiguous. So this will be like one, two, and three, four, five here. And uh, we take this three, remember that we took this three divided by two factorial, and this three divided by three factorial, this is a number of leaves. Remember that, look, there were here some factorials, yes? So we take <coughs> the coefficient for, the, for these trees. And look what happens now. Uh, the point is that we make out of the two trees, we're going to make, uh, 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 build uh, a tree um, with five leaves uh, using all five coordinates. And uh, uh, since the two, oh, there, there's one more thing which I should have mentioned here. Uh, this definition that we gave for the, for the uh, coefficient uh, uh, of, of every tree, if you notice, this definition is anti-symmetric in the nodes because we check whether this, whether one, the canopy of one node is bigger than the canopy of the other node or smaller strictly. So if we switch the branch 
then, uh, then we'll get the negative sign. So this means that this works for the anti-symmetrized version as well, this definition. So we don't need to bother about the anti-symmetrization. Because of the because of this definition. Okay, so now we sum these trees, and uh, wait, wait, I didn't yes. see the string flips two and three. I see. Okay, it's anti-symmetric, but well, in general, these conditions, the conditions are the following: you take uh, a node, you take the two branches from it. The canopy, for instance, here x2 plus x3. Let's take this one, x2 plus x3 and x4. Yes, and you check whether x2 three plus x3 is negative. Whether one is negative, the other positive, that gives you a minus. If the first is positive, the other is negative, that gives you a plus. So in what sense? Uh, well, if you switch four with two, three, keeping all the others equal, so you put here the branch four and here the branch with two, three. Yes, then this, this particular equation will, uh, will change sign, this particular node. And none of all the other nodes will remain the same. So this, uh, this expression is anti-symmetric. Uh, when we'll characterize later, if we have time, there's a local characterization of sums of plates and uh, one can check that this expression here is, uh, is a, a linear combination of actual plates. Yes, so so uh, it wouldn't need to be for, the, for our proof, but it is. Okay, and here's uh, the, uh, uh, so here are all the trees. So if this is, let's say one, two, and this is three, four, five, Yes, here are all the trees with one, two, and three, four, five, yes. Here are all the trees which have that particular boundary. So x1 plus x2 on one side, and x3 plus x4 plus x5 on the other side. Yes, and... Uh, um, so the... Um, This separation between x1 plus x2 and x3 plus x4 plus x5, yes? It can be, uh, so the tree is mapped that way into, uh, so if we separate the, the two regions in the tree, we get these two. Now the trees which have this property, as you can see here, I have marked, we have marked the nodes um, in two different ways. So uh, there's a, there, there are the nodes of the, uh, of the left tree, the nodes of the right tree, right-hand side tree, and there's a connection node, you see here, yes? Remember that the nodes are layered. So here, uh, I at the top, the connection node is on the left of the root. The root is skipped. So in this argument, so here the connection node is on the left of the root, and so we'll have two nodes on the left here and one on the right. And as you can see, they are on all possible positions between the levels one, two, and three. So we get this way, uh, a multinomial of A and B minus two. This A is a number of leaves here, and B minus two here. So this would be uh, three uh, multinomial of uh, A is two, and B minus two is one. So multinomial of two and one, yes, that's a binomial coefficient, really. The binomial, but I like to write it as multinomial. So multinomial of two and one, this is three. So we get this way, three trees. Can you see? And here we'll get, uh, we'll get uh, twice. Now, um, 
what, what happens, uh, sorry, so if we go from x2 plus, a, so here x1 plus x2 is positive, and x345 is negative, if we switch uh, signs, uh, now, um, if x1 plus x2, uh, let me uh, see here. So the line here is x1 plus x2 is, has a value, is zero. So uh, what I'm saying is that the contribution of this, uh, of the first three is exactly the difference between the, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a one times the, the uh, product of the coefficients of each. Uh, so why would this be? Uh, if uh, uh, just a bit for this, uh, for this, uh, just a second. So the, the, the statement is that the contribution of this is a plus one times the product of the contributions of, uh, times the product of the values of each. Uh, the contribution of these are two, if one is on one side and one is on the other, and the contribution of the last type when, when the connection point is on, the, uh, is on the right of the root is again one. And the sum is multinomial, so the equation then, the contribution of all would be multinomial of A, B minus two plus two times multinomial of a minus one, b minus one, plus multinomial of a minus two, b. Now you recognize this, this is a sum of uh, binomials, two rows up in the Pascal triangle. Yes, so, so the sum of these is exactly the multinomial of a and b. Can you check that the, so once again, the statement is that uh, the sum, these are the sum of, uh, these are the sums in Pascal's triangle. So here you take the sum of the two things above, and if you go one more level, then you go, you take the sums of this with one, the sum of this with two, and the sum of this with one. Yes? And these are, the, these are the three multinomials here. So their sum, uh, their sum would be uh, a multinomial of AB, which is uh, A plus B factorial over A factorial B factorial. And uh, uh, so this gives the equality of the coefficients. Now we have to check that the contribution of these ones is one, the contribution of this one is negative, or is two, and uh, uh, the contribution of this one is one again. We'll do this uh, uh, at the end. And let me, before that, let me give you one more uh, argument which is needed. Namely, uh, if the uh, if the two so this is a typical uh, this is a typical uh, uh, sum here. Uh, so this is on the edge between x1, 2, and x3, 4, which was in the picture. And uh, uh, so um, in the first region, x1, 2 is positive. In the other, x3, 4 is positive. So if the two are separated, as you can see here, if the two regions are separated, I mean in the three, x1, two, and x3, four, we will have a, a sign plus here because we check at this point at the root, we check whether x1, two is positive and x3, four is negative, and that's the case. So here we have positive, 
Here we will have a negative sign because uh, x12 will be negative and x34 will be positive. Yes, the rest of the computations are by induction, whatever happens in the 312 and in the 334. Now, ooh, this thing has jumped very strangely. Uh, now, here, if this thing is on the left, so if the connection node is on the left, then uh, if uh, x, uh, let's, let's look at, uh, at the connection node here, x12 is, uh, uh, positive and uh, x, x12 is positive here. And uh, we look at x3. Now look at x3 here. Do you see the node here is between x12 and x3, yes? So the point is that x3 does not change sign. Only x1 plus x2 changes sign on our division line. Yes, so X3 remains the same. That's, so if we take the difference, if we look at whether X12 is, pos let's say X3 is positive, it doesn't matter. Let's say X3 is positive. Then when X12 is positive, then you get a zero. And when X12 is negative, you'll get a, a negative one. So the difference between the two is one times the product of the values of, of the two. Similarly, if the node is on the right-hand side. Yes, so once again, if the node is between the regions x1, 2, and x3, 4, they switch signs. If it is between 1, 2, and another uh, region which does not change sign, then the difference between the two contributions is one, which is what we have used in the proof. And now, Finally, uh, if, uh, uh, okay, if the three is inserted, I should have, uh, if the uh, branch, if the new, if the second tree is inserted in the middle of the other one or has a part which is inserted in the middle of the other one, then this can be connected in two different ways here or here, on one side or on the other. And uh, since we have no more time, we leave, we can, I can leave it as, a, as an easy exercise to you to check that the two contributions here are, uh, cancel each other. So, um, this combined with the fact that the average of the pictures is the same allows us to do an induction. The induction for these uh, permitohedra, again, is the following. A face, a, f a face of the permitohedron is always a partition of the set of coordinates into two or more parts. The maximal face facet, yes, is a partition of the coordinates into two. And in particular, if you have here a permitohedron, you see when you have a square, for instance, here the coordinates are partitioned into x1, 2, and 3, 4, yes? Each of them is, is, uh, is permuted. So this is a product of two permitohedra. Yes, a face like this is a product of the permitohedra in x1, 2, 3, and in x4 which is trivial, so that's why it looks like a permitter here in x123. So the induction is always going to subsets. Permitohedra are basically the mechanism for dealing with subsets. The subsets of a set, so. And uh, what we do here is we take a boundary. Again, in that case, it was x12 x1 plus x2 versus x3 plus x4, the, the, comp the complement. We look at the jump at the derivative, and we find that it's a product of the two jumps in x1, 2, and in x3, 4, and is uh, if the two regions are ordered. 
meaning if they are the first and the if they are the set of coordinates one, two, three, four separated into two in an ordered way. If not, the contribution is zero. Yes, and that reduces the problem into a product of two plates of the previous one, and this proves the, the expression with trees. So this, uh, this seems to open uh, the way for a new type of, uh, of symmetric functions, uh, symmetric functions in the plane, I mean in hyperplanes, uh, maps for trees and subsets and so on. So I'll stop here. If you have uh, questions, so we'll meet again on Wednesday, right? And then there will be no meeting on Friday. Uh, do we have a class? Is there a class on Wednesday? Oh, there's no class on Wednesday. Okay, then we'll meet next Monday. So, uh, so you'll have uh, 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 you you can uh, you can look at these. Uh, Yes, we can go to the Mark Center now, I suppose. So yes, we should, uh, we should go there if you have uh, questions or comments. Uh, once again, this, uh, what we're doing here is a combinatorics of the higher representations. This, these are the foundations. So as you can see, it has a lot of, uh, it has even connections with number theory and with, I mean, combinatorics related to number theory. The number theory, multiplicative number theory will appear when we scale, uh, when we scale this, if we have time to do that. And that uh, appears to be related to the talk uh, of uh, Liminger. So uh, the function which appears there will appear here. So you, you can expect this. I mean, representation theory has consequences everything. So if you do higher representation theory, it will have consequences in all kinds of branches of math. Oh, and here's a nice picture. This is the fine one. Can you see here? These are blades. These are blades which meet at an affine point, yes? Here you don't take regions, but just uh, surfaces. Do you see? So around this point, there are six surfaces, yes? That will be a higher intertwiner and so. so. And these have never been uh, studied before. <laughs>